Hey everyone, my name is Max, and today I'm going to be working on my personal portfolio website. So I've been working on it on and off since about Thanksgiving time. For context, it is now April, and we're in the middle of social distancing. And so now that I am stuck inside my parents' house for the next few weeks, I figure it's a perfect time to record myself and actually finish the website. So I'm gonna hop on over to a notebook and kind of sketch out um, all the technologies we've been using and sort of how I've gone about it so far. Okay, so the first thing I did was make some sketches. Pretty much just normal nav bar that extends out like that. Just thinking about having your main picture, um, kind of a little short bio, some artboards, and then kind of like some albums. So it'd be like the album title, some pictures, kind of extend down. And then this is the example of my about page. So it's like having a picture of me, some more like a bio, um, some code written by me, like, so like this website, my RC card in high school, whatever other projects I end up doing. And yeah, so this is kind of the first thing I did was sketch it out. And then I did the website version. Um, very similar, except the nav would be up here, there'd be the logo here, and again, kind of the same structure. And then I started looking at um, logo ideas. And so it's the kind of idea I had, um, kind of like Max Mitchell, I actually ended up creating one, so I'll show that. And then I had some other ideas here too, which was, none of these were good. Uh, but yeah, kind of some insight into the design process. Now let's talk about how everything connects together. So we have the website, what I see, what everyone sees when they go to maximitchell.com. That's made up of two main um, libraries or components. We got Talon CSS, which basically gives you a bunch of different CSS classes that you can use in the components as like the class name. So you have like class name equals a bunch of different things and those relate to CSS stuff. I hate CSS, so I'm gonna try and use this. I think this makes it really easy too to do super customized formatting and styling without actually having to write all the CSS yourself. Then I have Gatsby, basically just a React plugin that interacts really well with GraphQL, which I'll touch on in a bit. So those make up the code that I write, which is where I push it to GitHub. And that's, that's where all my code is stored. It's already open source, so everyone can check it out. And then GitHub, when I push to the master branch, triggers a build job on Netlify. That will also let me know if it passes or fails. And then if it passes, it updates the host. And then users, when they go on my website, Netlify is the one actually serving up that information so that they can see it. So that's the front end part. Then the website and all that interacts with the back end and all my pictures and whatnot through Contentful. Contentful is kind of like Google Drive on steroids. So it's like you can kind of define the content types that you have. So in this case, I have an artboard one here. And so you can have like a title, an artboard, a description, date, metadata, upload time, a URL slug, whatever, all that. You define those fields. Then when you upload one, you can type in the title, add the pictures to the artboard, add all the stuff. Some of it can be automatically computed, like the upload time, for example. And it stores it on Contentful. And then the nice thing about it is, so a website with Gatsby, you can have it generate all the different URLs. So like, let's say for my artboard, I want a actual like URL page for each artboard. Those can be programmatically generated using Gatsby. And so, and for example, if like, if you're doing that, all you would care about is the slug and maybe the title to display like the links on the main website. So with that, you'd only want to pull that. That's where GraphQL comes in. You can tell it that you only want it to retrieve that information. Then for the main website, you'd also want the artboard, the description, the title, all of that. So then on that, in that GraphQL query, you'd actually be able to get all that information. And so basically for me, all I have to do is I create the content and upload it to Contentful, which also can kind of act as like a blog with my um, descriptions and whatnot. And then also when I make any changes to the front end website, I write it in Gatsby and Talwind, or like JavaScript and Talwind, uh, and I push those changes to GitHub, which automatically changes it. So that's how it all works. Let's take a look at Contentful. So you look here, I have my own portfolio. And first let's look at the content model. So this is kind of, I touched on the artboard one before, 
This is where you kind of define the fields that you want to be in that type of content. So right now I've got artboard and a photo collection. So my artboard has a title, a slug, an artboard, which is like my actual like picture, a description, some metadata tags, and an artboard date. You can kind of edit any of these. Um, I could add more at any time if I wanted to. And then I have a photo collection, which is, I'm calling it a photo collection. I don't know why I picked photo collection, but basically that's just a photo album. And that has a title, a slug, photos, description, and metadata. So those kind of make up the content models. And then if you look here, I have content. And so these, I have already a bunch of my artboards uploaded. So I can click on one, and this is what it looks like. So I've got the artboard itself, the slug, which is the URL, the title, and then my posts. And so these, I can actually format it kind of the way I want to, with like headings in bold. And then later on in the code, I can access it and style it the same way I do here. And then artboard date, so on and so forth. And we can also look at, it's like this one's a photo collection. So these are a bunch of photos. And I think there's gotta be a better way to do this. Maybe like I can do like an album of photos, but like right now I have to individually upload those. So that's something I wanna look towards, but it's not really urgent. So if you look at media, these are like all my pictures. And all this is free, so that's cool. Um, next we have Netlify. So here we have my website hosted. I did buy my domain name for like two years um, from somewhere, I don't know. I think I probably would have gone with like, I think some places are offering a free like .me domain now. Too late, doesn't really matter. Here if we look, we can see all my different production deploys. So this is whenever I uploaded to uh, master, my master branch. And I could do some settings and stuff, but those don't really matter. Um, there's a lot of other tutorials out there on Netlify. Basically you just hook it up to your GitHub and whenever you push to your master branch or whatever branch you pick, um, it'll trigger the build script and do it. Um, another thing I should note, so here we have environment variables. So this is how you actually let it access Contentful. And if you look, I also have it pulled my YouTube videos. So that's where I have the YouTube API key. So let's lets you, you can store this locally. Um, I'll show my code so you can still like develop it and uh, do that locally. But then once it's actually hosted on Netlify, you need these to be able to interact with Contentful once it's hosted. And then lastly, we have GitHub, my repo. This just shows me if it's success, the code quality on Codacy, and the maintainability on Code Climate. Gotta, gotta fix that. And basically, we have the code. So I've made a bit of progress, a bit, it's a few days later. As you can see, I pretty much finished the nav bar and some basic um, Jesus, formatting, paper just fell. I added a photos page, which is kind of the same as the home page. Nothing's really done for that yet. Videos, same thing, kind of same as the home page, nothing's done. This goes back to the home page. Um, this actually um, just added last night. Uh, I have to look through it, but basically it pulls from my open GitHub repos, um, and then I can link to it too. So it's like an old uh, project from high school, and then this is this project portfolio um, links to it. So there's that, and then the about page still the same. Um, I can like show what page we're currently on, that sort of thing, and I made it mobile responsive too. So as we change the size, it will shift. And then like the kind of 3D effect changes direction too. And then, so this is what you'd see on phones. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but a lot of the time was spent just learning Tailwind and CSS, honestly. Um, I'm kind of happy with how this effect turned out. Um, shout out to this page, Code My UI. Um, kind of used this baseline because I had no idea how back sh box shadows and everything works, but I don't know. CSS is the kind of thing where once you start actually doing a lot with it, it kind of starts to come naturally, I've noticed. So it should be a lot easier going forward. So let me bring this up. What did I add? So pages, I added the four 
pages, um, code or three code, photos, and videos. Um, pretty simple. Just pulls the videos and display it. It's pretty much copied from what I had on the index. Photos, same thing. Code is when it's a little bit different. Um, so the query to get the GitHub data, all my data. So I'm the viewer. It's my like login repositories, total count. Um, and for each one, the number of stars, which of course is <laughs> zero and one, the one being myself. Um, the readme info, description name, URL, that sort of thing. And then I just go through and not really doing any formatting yet. Um, obviously, you saw it. A lot of it, so I'll pull the navigation. Um, so this is my nav bar. Um, first off, we have a GraphQL query. So to use this use static query, so it's not like I have it at the bottom here. Um, this is a little bit different because this is like a separate static component. Um, so you do this kind of syntax for it. It's not like the pages uh, here, looks like at the bottom. And so that is for the header, um, like my logo. config. So this is where I added some special utilities. So that's this plugin. Add utilities, constant utilities. Add this gradient thing. Uh, Using my theme colors, so that's what you see here. And the box shadow, um, right, left, basically just the. So this one is negative, negative for the x, y. This one's positive, negative. And basically, what it is is it's a solid, same color box shadow, then a blue, then another solid, and a red. And that basically just gives it the sort of. Um, can't really zoom, zoom in. Kind of can. So it shows the first box shadow, then like the border, another one, and then border again. So that's pretty cool. So it's been a while since I've talked to you guys on camera, um, but I've got a lot of progress made on the website. It's also been like a week or two, as you can probably tell by the longer hair and the facial hair. So yeah, let's see, I finished the homepage. So that's what it looks like. Um, got this picture of me, little intro, you can click on here to go to about. Um, this goes to like computer engineering page, Illinois, um, the picture page, whatever. Got the recent artboards. These go to each of the artboards. And then recent photo collections and the most recent video I've posted. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy how it's turned out. Um, you can look at it on mobile, kind of just collapses. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, since last we talked, I think I also changed this. So instead of this like bouncing around at the medium point to like be on the side here, it just kind of stays at the bottom. It's a little bit more consistent throughout then like that. Um, and yeah, so I had a couple issues. Um, one that was very annoying is that this page, if you look at network, let me refresh. So if you look, there's page data and it is seven kilobytes. When I first made it this format, page data was being about 65 megabytes. And so the page was super slow to load. I had to wait for the 65 megabytes to load before anything on the page would load. And I could not figure out why. Turns out that my artboards were too big. So I, they're like 24 megabytes because they're, I think like 6,000 by 3,000 pixels, um, something like that. And Contentful, which max size, 20 megabytes. So the issue I was already into was that the images were like 24 and so it wasn't actually optimizing them. So even if I like changed Pull my code um, index. So here, even though I was pulling as a fluid like max height, it didn't care. It wasn't actually resizing it to be 800 pixels max height. Instead, it was still being the big 24 megabyte file. And so I had two of those. Um, I couldn't figure out why it was 65 megabytes. Um, I was thinking maybe, because like I'm only pulling two, I don't know. But yeah, so that was annoying. Um, eventually went into Contentful and I have since resized the artboards to now be 3000 by 1000 pixels. So much better.
Um, and yeah, so now what do we want to do today? I want to get done the photos page. I think it's gonna be similar to this, except obviously without the intro. So it'd be like artboards, photo collections. Might flip the order, do photo collections first, um, then artboards. Maybe like do like alternate, like three and artboard. I think that might be a good idea. And then videos, same thing. I think I'm just gonna have like max of my like six most recent videos kind of format it the same way, like this border, this border I've been doing. Code, still not sure what I'm gonna do with this. So right now it pulls my GitHub repos. Um, yeah, not too sure about this. I might still just kind of keep it like this, it's GitHub repos. I don't really have any other projects that like I have like school projects and stuff, but nothing I can really put on my website. So I think for now, um, this might be okay. And then about is going to be similar to this, but with more about like my actual history, I'm going to put my resume embedded on there and also probably have like my work history, internships, that sort of thing. Let's get started. Five months after I first made this GitHub repo, I'm finally actually happy with how the website turned out and I'm ready to actually kind of like step away from it, call it done, be proud of it for at least a little bit before I end up changing it probably a month or two from now. But yeah, I kind of just want to wrap up this video. I hope you guys are able to like kind of see some insights into the process I went to actually make it. Kind of started off obviously with the papers, still have them somewhere here. Um, kind of like doing the early designs, early concept of the framework and everything, start out with the API and actually getting, you know, the actual structure of it done before going into the styling, which took the longest time, as you can tell, a month after I first started recording. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at it. So this is the home page. We got some nice little animations, transitions for when you hover. We got my artboards. We have my photo collections and then my most recent video. Um, this goes to the about page. So this is the newest thing. Got some more like information about me, my experience. I'm really happy with how this whole work kind of timeline turned out. I think it looks pretty pretty sharp. They can reach out to me, email, Instagram, GitHub, LinkedIn, YouTube. We've got the code tab. Just, so this is linked up to my GitHub, the uh, their GraphQL API. Um, you can look at my branch. So this again, um, this project is open source. I want you guys to use it. You can copy it as it is, change it to be your names. I wouldn't really mind. I would say the point of it is for you guys to actually like, you know, go copy it, look at the code, kind of see how I actually did things, you know, learn yourself. But if you guys want to just take it and use it as it is as your own, I mean, I'd be happy. I'd like some sort of, you know, shout out, but like, let me know if you're doing that. But yeah, I don't really mind. We've got the videos. So this pulls from my YouTube, their API. Um, currently got two, hopefully, by the time you guys see this, that this will be up. And then the photos page kind of flips the order from the home page. So we got photo collections, then artboards. You can look at a photo collection. Got the last nice little um, like Modell pop up. Really happy of how it looks. The like Queenstown got like a nice little like blog kind of thing. Artboards. Let's do let's like the Bendigo one. Takes a little bit to load, but these are big files, so I'm okay with that. And then we can look to how it looks on mobile. Still looks pretty sharp, I think. Happy with it. Yeah. And then if we actually look at the code, obviously, like I said, open source. I'm not gonna go through it. You guys can look at it if you want to. Um, yeah, um, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, I hope this video helped give some insight into my process. I was really inspired by Devin Crawford. I've been following his videos for years. I know he kind of stopped posting recently. His last video was maybe like a year ago. But that's kind of like the idea I was going with. Um, sort of like project vlog, showing into like how I work. I hope you guys liked it. Please leave some comments about what you liked, what you didn't like. I hope you do some more of these. I don't know what my next project will be. I think it might be either like a music um, visualization table, like a beer dye table, or it might be like a script to cut out me saying um and the like blank spaces like my pauses because i edited a lot of that out talking to the camera but yeah um 
again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.